Travis went good, so I uh, got a, a uh, comment on uh, one of my channels, one of my videos, by a, uh, a supporter. He uh, had informed me that he had been trying to correct Wikipedia of the misinformation and disinformation about the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And he told me that they replied saying that there is no consensus for the changes he was recommending. <laughs> consensus, huh? So, truth is now dependent on a democratic vote. <laughs> and that uh, he's not a real historian. The whole purpose of Wikipedia was to put primary source references. And so you don't have to be a real historian as long as you put primary source references. But you'll notice as you go over church uh, sites on Wikipedia of different characters, places, events, that the references, if they don't have anything cited and claim need citation or have uh, modern authors. For example, there's a guy who published a, a brand new book on Brigham Young, 2019. And I did the video exposing that Wikipedia had caved all the information about Brigham Young to this new author. One book, and all of a sudden, he's the professional. There was one thing of value that I did find while doing that video. It was live. is that we now know why Brigham Young wanted to take over the church and murder Joseph Smith. The author didn't catch it. He thinks the church is true. And Brigham and Joseph were friends. <laughs> I've gone over two primary source documents where Joseph calls Brigham Young Judas. <laughs> you don't see those in referenced in Wikipedia. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, his wife was sick, and for two years they had been attending a, a, a church and hoping that the priesthood power would cure her, and she eventually died. They never joined the church. Then she died. Then all of a sudden, Brigham Young immediately joins. Now, that's not suspicious at all, is it? Oh, you killed my wife. I'm joining now. Uh-huh. Yeah, no. And so you can see why Russell M. Nelson, a medical doctor, has no interest in healing any of you, but by the power of gratitude, Jesus, prayer, fasting, church attendance. It's because Brigham Young passed it on down. And so, if you look at Brigham Young's 
Wikipedia page. I had uh, Sidney Rigdon's Rigdonite Wikipedia page up. Because there's something very interesting. So yes, you're going to get bombshell exclusive information. See, under the picture of Brigham Young, you see the misinformation and disinformation claiming that Brigham Young is the second president. And president is in blue so that you can click on it and, and find information about what president means of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And again, you can click on that. <coughs> Brigham Young is not the second president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. He is the first. Joseph never called it the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. It was the Church of Christ the whole way through. There are primary source documents to refer to. This is misinformation on Wikipedia. So when Joseph Smith died, there were several groups, and they don't include uh, David Whitmer, uh, who formed his own church and, and uh, uh, later wrote a book, An Address to All Believers in Christ, I believe was the title. And it was uh, a uh, response to him learning about Brigham Young's changed Doctrine and Covenants the year before he died. He put in section 132, gutted monogamy, and took out the monogamy portion in section 131. Again, primary source information, which would have been helpful, helpful for CNN when they did their Fast Facts of Mormonism. CNN claimed that Joseph Smith put in the polygamy chapter in 1835. Yeah, I don't see CNN getting giving a retraction. Church ain't gonna say nothing. Oh, yeah. 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 CNN, reputable news source. Uh huh? Just like Wikipedia. So, yes, Joseph Smith dies, and there's a whole bunch of misinformation about the manner in which he died, because nobody was convicted. There technically, legally, is no one who was held responsible for Joseph Smith's assassination. Despite all the people involved... And so Brigham Young was just one group, which just happens to be the largest, of those who formed their own church. And he claimed Joseph Smith, but if you read the document by which he claimed, you know it's fake. But he also came up with some other forged documents. That's a pattern, because the Mormon War, Oh, they got the judge to claim Joseph Smith was telling him to do it. And uh, so the Council of Fifty and Joseph Smith personally, one-on-one -on -one with his best buddy Brigham, gave Brigham Young secret documents telling Brigham that he is to lead the church when Joseph is gone. We know that's all BS. As members of the church of any of the branch offs that kept Joseph's 1835 Doctrine and Covenants. How do I know this? Because, is it 1835? Yeah, 
1835, March 28th, section 107, verse 22. This is how Joseph Smith established how succession was to be done. Primary source document right here of the Melchizedek Priesthood, three presiding high priests chosen by the body. So is it the president of the Quorum of the Twelve? Where did you go to school? That's how it's supposed to have been done. And it was not done. Therefore, proper logical deductive argument, Joseph Smith's organization has ceased to exist. If you're not going to follow his rules for succession, there is no succession. You are starting a brand new church. And you claim Joseph as the inspiration for it. But to tell people that you are the successor is a bold-faced lie. Because there were others who likewise claimed succession rather than following the actual process that Joseph Smith himself set for succession. The first one I'll go over is James Strang. He called his church the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Well, that's strange. Why would he do that? Because Joseph's church was the Church of Christ. Well, it's because James Strang came out of Brigham Young's church. So he just took off the the. Well, James Strang took a group of followers out to Beaver Island in Michigan. And then John C. Bennett showed up. Hey guys, let's start polygamy! And James Strang was shot and murdered by an unknown person. Or persons. Well, that's strange. I thought Joseph Smith practiced polygamy and that was what the church was all about. Remember, he came out of Brigham's church. <clears throat> These were the people who were not happy with Brigham Young and his, oh, you're practicing polygamy in secret, are you? I want nothing to do with that. I'm out. Oh, James Strang. He has metal plates of ancient origin which he has the documented translation and a letter from Joseph saying he's supposed to be the successor that sounds like it's right for me my spiritual witness is tingling yeah well it was over after his death <clears throat> and apparently it still continued on through somebody else because there's a, a blue arrow going all the way up to 2010 when this little chart thing was made and I don't know this may not have been by a real historian <laughs> but James Drang claimed to be the second president of Joseph Smith then you have Joseph Smith III. Oh, here's a fun one. <clears throat> he titled his church after coming to Utah and finding out about Brigham Young's. He decided to call his the Reorganized Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints when he was finally old enough and decided to do his own religion. It's now called the Community of Christ. He's the direct descendant of Joseph Smith. And Emma is the source for Joseph Smith telling her in secret that 
his son is to lead the church. <coughs> After he dies. And so, uh, Joseph Smith III got into a legal fight with the Granville Hendrick Church of Christ over the temple lot. And in that judicial decision, the judge ruled that Joseph Smith III is the legal successor to Joseph's original church. Huh. I thought it was Brigham Young. It says on Wikipedia he's the second president. <laughs> nope. Legally, according to the laws of the United States of America, Joseph Smith III is the actual successor, despite not following the Doctrine and Covenants either. But the judge ruled that the temple lot in Missouri belongs to Granville Hendrick of his Church of Christ. Church of Christ? That's strange. Why would it be called Church of Christ? Because that's what Joseph called it. <coughs> and, uh, and so life is a bowl of cherries, guacamole, whatever. And so then we have Sidney Rigdon. Sidney Rigdon, from the beginning, even before the beginning, if you know about the real church history, he's one of the very few who know the big picture of Mormonism. Very few. There's Smith Sr., Jr., Hiram, Sidney Rigdon, Oliver Cowdery, and likely his father. I still have not found where the father could be a part of it yet. But there are all indications that he was. <clears throat> and so this little merry band of few comes from a movie. We band a few. We very few. Something like that. I can't. Uh, it's going to bug me now. The person incorrectly called them Rigdonites. And this is what I was looking up. He called his the Church of Christ as well. Huh. So we have two that called it the Church of Christ just as Joseph did. Hmm. How strange. <laughs> strange. <laughs> so, I was trying to find out more about uh, uh, his organization. Apparently, at one point, and I don't see a reference anywhere, <laughs> it was called the Church of Jesus Christ of the Children of Zion at one point. Uh, but its adherents are known as Rigdonites, sometimes Pennsylvania Latter-day Saints or Pennsylvania Mormons. It's uh, William Bickerton who came out of Rigdon's church to form what he called the Church of Jesus Christ. And so they trace to Sidney Rigdon as successor. The Wikipedia page even calls Sidney Rigdon successor, but under Sidney Rigdon's picture, I don't see second president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. 
Why not, Wikipedia? All the consensus was that he wasn't? Real historians haven't put it in here? And they say, Wigdenite is the, a name given to members of the Latter-day Saint movement who accept Sidney Rigdon as the successor in the church presidency to movement founder Joseph Smith, Jr. Oh, it was just their opinion. <laughs> Dear God. Do you see what kind of damage such blatant misinformation and disinformation can cause? I mean, dear God, none of these are successors. Sidney Rigdon, in his own talk in August, after Joseph Smith was assassinated, came out and said, I do not want to be the successor. I want to oversee the church until it's restored. Huh. Restored, huh? <laughs> and so, yes, Sidney Rigdon supposedly contacted a guy by the name of... of... where was it? Because his wife plays a very important role. <laughs> Stephen Post in January... 1856. Uh, Stephen Post wrote to Rigdon, actually, it says, and was concerned about the disordered state of Mormonism. Huh, disordered, you say. <laughs> and uh, in March, Rigdon responded with revelation, commanding Stephen Post <laughs> to reestablish the Rigdonite organization. And so, yeah, Post apparently became good friends and Rigdon's spokesman. And oh, we have a reference for this. And its author. No. Yeah. Bishop M. Guy, 1994, Stephen Post, from Believer to Dissenter to Heretic. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> uh, Wikipedia, did you guys not graduate from high school? Did you not have to do any reports where you had to put footnote referencing and an index? on how to do all this? He just said, oh, I guess the teacher said something about that in school. Let's do a Wikipedia page and have people do that. <laughs> oh, people are putting whatever they want? Well, let's crack down and say that we need a consensus, a democratic vote of what is true, and real historians will link as primary sources. Dear God! Is that what they teach you guys in school? I mean, seriously. I was educated to not do this. I mean, when, when students would put secondary source materials when the teacher knew there was a first, the teacher marked them down and they got a lesser grade on their papers. Always, always, always go to the primary source document. And if this author, Bishop M. Guy, did indeed use a primary source document, why the bloody bleep bleep is it not here? I 
it is his sacred little secret. Only I have possession of the primary source information, and you must buy my book to learn what it is. <laughs> Dear God. I mean, it's almost... Well, it is worse. <laughs> In archaeology... When an archaeologist makes a discovery, he owns the site. And he gets to spend the rest of his days as an archaeologist working on it. And will get paid for the rest of his life. Going very slow. And at the end, publishing a book by which he then retires. And so the rest of the world is aware of the discovery, but have to wait until the guy retires and publishes his book to find out anything about it. What a joke. Dear God. But I thought this was interesting. Uh, his wife, Jane, converted to Rigdon's church. And they went on a mission to Manitoba, Canada, where he spent the rest of his life. And Rigdon then dies, and Post takes over. Was there a consensus? <laughs> or did he just take over? And is this information that Guy is telling us from Post? <laughs> Oh, yeah, Sidney Rigdon, he brought me into the church. He said it, the church needed to be reestablished because Mormonism was in disorder. disorder. And, and so when he died, I took the mantle of responsibility to guide the truth. Is that how it was done? Because there's some missing information, guy. But I thought this was interesting. In 1880, after Post had died, Andrew J. Hinkle was appointed president of the church in his stead. So he was appointed. But he was replaced in 1882 by Jane. The president of Sidney Rigdon's church, a woman? Women are not allowed to have priesthood, let alone priesthood office, says Dallin H. Oaks of the Brighamite church. <laughs> Where in the world would they have gotten that idea? Certainly not the primary source document from 17 March 1842 to the Relief Society that was newly founded by Joseph Smith. I, I, dear God. So yeah, that, I thought that was fascinating that there can be a female president of the church <coughs> in the absence of a man <laughs> or they can vote for it but uh, that was done in the 18th dynasty and, uh, David Moses the second died before David Moses the third was old enough to take over the throne and so the Amun priesthood uh, uh, in consultation with Hepsetsut, the queen mother uh, she had informed them that in her patriarchal blessing in the pre-mortal existence 
that the council in heaven knew this would happen and that she was to be the successor to the Pharaonic throne until David Moses III was old enough. And she even said that she is immaculately conceived through her mother queen from God Amun himself, Father Amun. Immaculately conceived. Isn't that amazing? And so the Amun priesthood said, hey, works for us, you're in. That's a second known female pharaoh of the 18th dynasty. And I've told you guys about how Brigham Young, his church was shut down by the United States of America. Legally destroyed. Ended. Finished. Completed. Ceased to exist. What other word can I use to explain this to you? They were committing crimes with the tithing yard. Tithing. And they were shut down by the United States of America for their corruption. And yet, Wilford Woodruff carried on the burden even in order. Oh my god! <laughs> there we go. And so, John Taylor, New Revelations added into the Doctrine and Covenants, the United States forced them out. Now do you understand why section 132 still remains? They took out John Taylor's but they claim, oh, Section 132, that was by Joseph, United States. We have to keep it in. All right, fine. But you can't practice it. <laughs> they pulled the fast one on the United States. Because the United States did not... <laughs> they referenced Wikipedia rather than going to the primary source document of the 1835 edition of the Doctrine and Covenants. And so, yeah, Wilfred Woodruff, church is shut down. And the church, this is the website, newsroom.churchofjesuschrist.org Article, church slash presidents, or dash presidents. And so here's how the church spins the whole Edmunds Tucker Act. <clears throat> in 1890, after much pondering and prayer, President Woodruff received a revelation that the Latter-day Saints should cease the practice of polygamy. He died in San Francisco on 2nd September, 1898. Uh, nothing about the Edmunds Tucker Act, nothing about being arrested, nothing about tithing. It's now called a protection racket, what they were doing, along with some other crimes branching out from it. But gone! The church won't talk about it. Oh, I don't even see any referencing. <laughs> and so then you have Lorenzo Snow, Mr. Windows of Heaven that never happened. <laughs> he served as a missionary and apostle before becoming church president on 13 September 1898. He helped the church recover 
from the challenges of the previous decades? There were no challenges of the previous decades because it was just in 1890, after much pondering and prayer, President Wilfred Woodruff received a revelation that the church, the Latter-day Saints, should cease the practice of polygamy. What challenges? <laughs> I need to know. What do you mean I'm forbidden to know? What do you mean I'm going to be excommunicated if I see, search for it? <laughs> what do you mean I'm going to be called a lazy learner doubter <laughs> if I go to <coughs> Travis Goodsell's videos? Oh my god! Okay, I will, I, will, I will give my loyalty to the church. <sighs> he expanded missionary efforts stabilize church finances. What? <laughs> By encouraging? <laughs> encouraging? <laughs> the payment of tithing. <laughs> Let's do a little test, all of you who are faithful Mormons. Tell your bishop you're going to stop paying your tithing for a couple of years to financially stabilize yourself. <laughs> and I see his response. <laughs> Make sure you have your temple recommends handy. He's going to want to look at it. <laughs> Question number 10. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! <sighs> Dear God! <sighs> and so, yeah, then Joseph F. Smith. So, technically, Lorenzo Snow is not the legal successor because the church is gone, it ended. It's over. Edmunds Tucker Act shut it down. So there isn't supposed to be a successor. There is supposed to be no Lorenzo Snow. He's an asterisk president of the church. Because he's not official. He's not legal. And neither is Joseph F. Smith. Fielding Smith. Son of Hiram Smith. Who was kidnapped by Heber C. Kimball taken hostage to this valley. You know, illegitimate president. How sad. The whole thing about this is sad. Asterisk presidents of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and, and they tell us their challenges? Or revelation, ceasing the practice of polygamy, not tithing? And so then we have Heber J. Grant, the real founder of this current church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Because that's what he titled it in the Articles of Incorporation in 1923. The primary source document is a available for all according to the Freedom of Information Act and it's all over the internet oh no you can't look at that stuff only what the church publishes are we allowed to read <clears throat> and so yes Doctrine and Covenants took out the doctrine <laughs> lectures on faith gone in 1921 Mr. Nazi. God. Because, yeah, he was the president of the church during World War II. Lasted all that long. And I recommend a real historian <laughs> who has primary source documents in his publication 
Moroni and the swastika. That is the real church history.